What is holistic urology? Well, the field of urology uh, combines uh, both integrative medicine and alternative medicine. And um, I've been practicing both. Um, I think that the idea behind holistics is that we go into the entire body rather than just focusing on the prostate, the kidney, or the bladder. We try to understand more about why a patient has a certain condition. Let's say they have prostate cancer. Do they have a recent stress in their life? Um, is it diet related? And then we try to find out what's going on in their lives, their entire body, and then focus on their entire body in the treatment. And for prostate cancer, a lot of the patients that have developed this disease don't necessarily need the traditional treatments like radiation or surgery um, and can be treated holistically, incorporating many of the nutrients and herbal things, mind-body therapies, relaxation techniques. And one of the things that we'll talk about on this segment is the active holistic surveillance for prostate cancer patients. So holistic remedies, which are used for a lot of different uh, disorders, what we're trying to do here at Winthrop is bring this into the urology department so that we can allow patients to use this as part of their treatment uh, and maybe as their entire treatment. What is active holistic surveillance and how is it used to treat prostate cancer? Active holistic surveillance is an alternative to watchful waiting. In the past, when patients had prostate cancer and they didn't want any treatment at all or they were older or not as uh, in good shape physically, we said, you know what, we'll just watch the cancer, we won't do anything for you. But here at Winthrop, we have an active holistic program where we take patients that we feel are best candidates for this type of an approach and incorporate things into their lifestyle, change their diet, add evidence-based medicine supplements, uh, add some vitamin D, add things into their diet and supplements that will reduce inflammation, all of these things are an active component. Rather than just saying watch and wait, we try to be much more active with these patients. We get PSAs every three months. We'll do a biopsy in a year to make sure that your cancer is not getting any worse. And in fact, many of the patients, their cancer has gone away. We'll do another MRI, and then we'll continue to follow you. So that's the active component of active holistic surveillance. What is the Gleason score? So after a patient has an elevated PSA, the blood test, the next step is to consider a prostate biopsy. Now, not everyone with an elevated PSA is going to have cancer. It's not a cancer test, it's a prostate marker. So it can go up if a patient has an inflammation in their prostate, or if a patient has a benign enlargement of the prostate, or if they've had sexual relations that morning or the night before, that can raise the PSA. But if the PSA has been elevated um, and the doctor feels that the next step should be a biopsy, then that is typically done in the office. And that's done with an ultrasound. Um, it typically will take about 10 or 15 minutes to do um, in the office with a local anesthetic. And then the tissues that are removed from the prostate are sent to our lab here at Winthrop University Hospital, and our dedicated team of urologic pathologists will look at these slides and determine if there's cancer or there's not, or maybe there's inflammation. If there is cancer, then they use what's called a Gleason grading system. And that system allows the pathologist to look under the microscope and look at the architecture of the cells and see how the cells are arranged. And we can grade the cells on the Gleason scale from six to 10. On the lower end, the six, that's usually, it's cancer, but it's much less aggressive. When we start talking about Gleasons that are eight, nine, and 10, those Gleason scores are more aggressive and we get concerned about those because the more aggressive or the higher the Gleason, the higher the chance, not an absolute chance, but the higher the chance that the cells can get outside of the prostate capsule into the bloodstream, and then we get concerned about metastasis of prostate cancer, which can occur uh, in patients, and that would be spreading of cancer 
to either the lymph node or the bone. That's the most common places where prostate cancer will spread. So the Gleason score really gives us prognostic information as to how well that patient is going to do, and it really comes down to sampling the tissue and looking at the tissue under the microscope. How do you determine which patients are candidates for active surveillance? When a patient has prostate cancer, one of the first things that we'd like to know is, is it confined to the prostate? Is it early stage or is it late stage, advanced, where it's spread to the lymph nodes or the bone? The best patients really for the active holistic surveillance are those that are the earlier stage patients that have the disease where it's just confined to the prostate. And those patients on the biopsy, on the Gleason score, have usually grades six or seven in tumor volumes that are typically less than about 50%. And those are really the ideal biological patients. And I say biological because what we're referring to is the actual aggressiveness of the tumor, that these tumor cells may not need the traditional treatments like radiation or surgery and would be very ideally treated with the active surveillance program that we have here at Winthrop. And then we'd like to see a well-motivated patient because the patients do need to incorporate certain things into their lifestyle, like diet, like some supplements, more exercise, um, mind-body therapies, uh, relaxation techniques, all of these things that are incorporated into the holistic urology program here at Winthrop can allow these tumor cells to remain dormant for many years and even for their lifetime. And I think those are really the, the, the ideal characteristics of the patient. Their PSA values probably should be under 10. Their digital exams probably shouldn't reveal any nodules in the prostate. Um, those are some other characteristics that I think are ideal for active holistic surveillance. How are patients following a holistic surveillance method monitored? When a patient goes on to the active holistic surveillance, what we do here at Winthrop is we monitor them in a number of ways. One way that we monitor patients is by blood tests. And the blood tests typically we use are the PSA as well as vitamin D levels. Um, and it's been shown that vitamin D can be very important and one of the important uh, molecules for uh, preventing further prostate cancer growth is uh, vitamin D. So all of our patients are on at least 5,000 of vitamin D, depending upon their level. We also monitor a uh, molecule in the blood called C-reactive protein, which is a measurement of inflammation. And what we're hoping and what we've seen in many of our patients here at Winthrop is that the inflammatory component of the diet by reducing inflammation and taking in herbs that reduce inflammation and dietary components that all lead to lower inflammation will lower the C-reactive protein. Um, and then um, we also look at some liver function tests and some blood counts as well. Uh, we do a, a digital exam of the prostate. We always want to feel the prostate during our follow-up examination. We would recommend another biopsy. I typically do that in a year just to make sure that the cancer in the prostate has not become more aggressive. The Gleason score, if it was a six, we'd like it to either stay a six. And, you know, some of the patients, we don't find cancer on the next biopsy. And I also think that an MRI is useful. And today, the MRIs uh, are very powerful. We have a wonderful MRI unit here with dedicated, uro, you know, radiologists, uroradiologists that can look very closely at the prostate capsule and make sure that there has been no change from the prior year's uh, MRI. And then in addition to that, we look at the patient's quality of life. We ask them how they're doing. How's their, you know, how are you feeling? What's your weight? Um, how is your urinary function? How is your sexual function? So all of these quality of life components are also part of the Winthrop you know, holistic urology program. How important is nutrition and supplementation for the success of holistic urology? So there have been a lot of studies, um, and I've been a leader on many of them, to show that diet can play a significant role in the development of prostate cancer, as well as once you have prostate cancer, to try to modify the cancer or to prevent it from growing and dividing. 
Um, all of our patients um, are on a diet that eliminates red meat. We have them incorporate more fresh vegetables, getting rid of fried foods, exchanging some of the proteins for soy protein. We do allow chicken and fish. Um, there can actually be alcohol on the diet as well. Uh, resveratrol, which is the compound that has been shown to be very effective in preventing prostate cancer, is the highest in the Pinot, uh, Pinot Noir red wine. So patients all often ask me, doctor, can I take alcohol? And yes, they can take red wine. Um, so I think that the, there's a whole things, uh, list of things on the diet that are very important uh, for our patients on the holistic uh, surveillance program. And then in supplements, you know, the vitamin D, uh, there is some herbal supplements that we use to reduce inflammation. We use a lycopene supplement, which is a tomato extract that has been shown to prevent prostate cancer growth. A pomegranate extract pill is important, um, as well as um, some other herbs uh, and nutrients that we uh, have found to be very effective uh, in preventing the growth of the cancer. How long can a patient stay on active surveillance? Well, if a patient's on active surveillance and they're doing well, they stay on it for life. In fact, that's the goal. I mean, that's the ideal patient. One that's PSA is stable, it's not doubling, it's not increasing steadily. The repeat biopsies are showing either the same amount of cancer or less. Their MRIs are clear, they're feeling well, they have great energy, and they're motivated to stay on the surveillance. Um, and by that, I mean that some patients say, you know what, I, I don't want to do this diet anymore, or I, I don't want to buy the supplements, and so some patients drop out of surveillance and, and have treatment for that reason. But um, the majority of patients that, if they're properly selected, and you say, well, what do you mean by properly selected cancer patient? Well, the patient that's well motivated, that has the early stage cancer, um, that will incorporate these things into their lifestyle, they stay on it for life. And that's really the, the goal of this type of a program. What are other treatment options for prostate cancer? The mainstay treatments for prostate cancer right now in the United States for early stage prostate cancer or what we call localized prostate cancer would be radical surgery, which today for the most part is done robotically. And we have a very active robotic surgery program here at Winthrop. Patients who are not candidates for the robot or don't want surgery can go and choose a form of radiation. Now, there are many forms of radiation today. We have a cyber knife here at, at Winthrop, which allows patients to undergo radiation in just five days. There are other centers that have what's called an IMRT external beam radiation. That's 45 days. And some patients decide to have what's called a seed implant, otherwise known as brachytherapy. We also have that available here at Winthrop. The other option for patients beyond active surveillance that we've been talking about here and surgery and radiation is another form of therapy, which I actually do quite a bit, which is called cryotherapy. Now, cryotherapy is freezing of the prostate cancer using very thin needles that are placed into the prostate gland and freeze the cancer. That's done in an hour. It has to be done with some anesthesia, but it's done here at Winthrop in our ambulatory surgical cryo center where patients can come in, have the cancer frozen, and if it's just on one side, we're now doing focal ablation where we just freeze just that one area of cancer rather than do the entire prostate. Um, and then the patients go home and that's really all they have. That's all the only treatment they may need. And this would spare the patient a lot of the side effects that can occur uh, with some of the other treatments uh, that I mentioned. Where do I get more information about holistic urology? So if you're interested in, uh, you'd like more information about active holistic surveillance or any of the subjects that we talked about today on prostate cancer, call 1-866-WINTHROP.